Hi, in this video, we're going to take a look at an example Kubernetes admission controller. Um, Kubernetes admission controllers are used to essentially uh, make decisions on whether deployments are admitted to a Kubernetes cluster. And in this instance, uh, this controller will essentially only allow images to be deployed if they've been signed using the Endor Labs platform. I'm not going to cover the signing uh, process uh, in this video. Uh, that's well documented. Um, but the controller, essentially, uh, we are going to deploy just to show you what happens if we deploy a signed image versus an, an unsigned image. There are a few limitations to be aware of. Um, the controller itself is deployed to a hard-coded namespace called Endor, and it monitors an environment or a namespace called production in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, to decide what to admit. Um, it will only validate images which have been signed with a GitHub pipeline and image names need to include the shar of the actual image. Uh, so that will need to be there in order to do the deployment. In order to demo or use this particular controller, you will need admin access to a cluster and you will need uh, kubectl installed locally and pointed at that cluster. I'm gonna use Minikube for the demo. Um, you will also need an API key from Endor Labs in order to essentially allow the controller to make API calls to the Endor platform to check that the deployed containers are, are verified. Um, and you will need to push the controller to a, you know, a, a container registry of some description. I'm, I'm pointing, uh, I'm pushing to Docker in this instance. Um, there are instructions in here on how to build the particular controller. You can make changes. The source code's here, so you can make changes to the controller and rebuild if you wish to. Um, and then there are instructions on deploying the controller. It's fairly straightforward. So um, you need to basically modify this particular file. Um, specify the image name of the controller depending on where you deployed it to. So this is my Docker Hub uh, repo. You'll need to modify the Endor namespace. This is the namespace where the controller will make the API calls to figure out if a container is signed or not. Um, and then you'll need to run a deploy script. So uh, we'll do that now. Um, I'm going to run K9s, which allows us to visualize the cluster. So here is my Minikube cluster. At the moment, it's just running standard Kubernetes stuff. We're then going to deploy the controller. So here the controller has been deployed. It's in the Endor namespace. And it will be monitoring the production namespace to see you know, what we deploy there and whether it's going to admit the particular container. So we've got a couple of different images here. Um, we have a signed image. See this image called Flask app here. If I just show you that was signed within a GitHub Actions pipeline. And this is the digest you can see up on Docker Hub. So this is the image we're going to deploy that, that was signed. Uh, so if we run kubectl apply dash f examples and we try to deploy our signed image, this will get created immediately. Um, the web public the webhook is extremely fast. Uh, this has been admitted to the cluster and it's now running in the cluster. Um, if we try to admit something that hasn't been signed, you'll see we get an error back from the controller um, indicating to us that the, it was unable to verify because there's no matching signatures. Okay, that's it for the video. Thank you.